What up, what up, what up, gang? Y'all can share this live. Today, today is a deep conversation that we talked about before. And it's about love. Conditional and unconditional love. Or define unconditional love. What does that look like? Because last time we had we had a uh, live, we basically had you know different people with different perspectives on unconditional love. You know what I mean? Which makes sense because love is an action, and so if it's an action, then there's an expectation of something. So everybody has their own expectation of how they want to be treated. You know what I mean? Handled. Um, you know, care for. So that's an interesting topic. You know what I mean? I think it's important for us to have a discussion on what the definition Your phone's of breaking up. unconditional love is. Your phone's breaking up. Your phone's breaking up. So you, you start up the, uh, you just start us up, Sheree, because I might have to hop off and then hop back on. So if anybody's new to the live, I am Sheree. That's Jamal. We've been married for 12 years and it hasn't been the easiest road, but we made it this far and we started this podcast to help people with rebuilding and reconnecting and different levels of their relationship not necessarily married you could be single you could be in a long-term relationship and don't know how to um, move to the next level in your relationship um, so yeah that's what this platform is for so today, tonight's topic is define unconditional love because everybody's definition of love is different and unconditional love is different. So, hey, so, you know, let's talk about it. So what is everybody's definition of unconditional love? Jamal, turn the TV down. Thank you. Hey yo. So Jamal, what's your definition of unconditional love? Um, so my definition of unconditional love. So I think um I think I think like my definition of unconditional love is 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 basically, you know what I mean, someone that is willing to like just like so like somebody within the time that you have a uh that understanding or that agreement. Like within that time that like, you know, we are in love, we're, you know, lovers, we're, you know, in our relationship or we're in a marriage or whatever the case may be. Within that time frame, you know what I mean? Unconditional love to me is being willing to do, you know, what I mean, any and everything for your partner, even down to putting your life on the line for your partner and or for your children. You know, what I mean, um, when it comes to partners, I think that, you know, um, why you within that time, you know, what I mean, given everything you got, I think like when it comes to. Uh, but but I think it's weird because it still to me has conditions like i think is i think love itself you know what i mean maybe unconditional meaning like the love you might have for somebody may always be there but the person don't have to be there so the love could be there but i ain't got to be there to endure certain things if it crosses certain parameters you know what i mean so the love can be unconditional to me but um being there to endure mistreatment and things like that, that doesn't have to be there. So the body, you know what I mean, don't have to be um, still connected to a person that's not, you know what I mean, treating them right. Now, I'm not saying going through certain hardships or whatever, but somebody that, you know, ultimately um, 
you know, has your well-being in danger or ultimately does not, you know, care for you or ultimately is trying to harm you or ultimately, you know what I mean, doesn't care to, to help you to grow, you know what I mean, or whatever the case may be. Like, the love could be there, but, you know what I mean, I ain't going to be there. You know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't going to be there. The love can be there all day, but, you know what I mean, in it's, it's terms of my physical presence, you know what I mean, I still have to reserve an unconditional love for myself, you know what I mean, and I can't get away from my own body. So, you know what I mean, I have to stay true to that at the same time. It would be like an, an injustice to my soul, to my spirit, you know what I mean, and to who I am and the fabric of who I am to be in a situation where I allow somebody to, you know what I mean, to um to mistreat that, you know. So uh that's my, my definition of and just in a nutshell, because we're gonna go in a little bit more. I don't wanna take up the whole, you know, conversation, but in a nutshell, you know what I mean, to me, love is unconditional. Um, but being um in love with somebody physically, it has conditions. For somebody to keep me around physically, mm-hmm. it's certain, you know what I mean, re- parameters that need to be respected and appreciated and, and, and all of that. And vice versa, you know what I mean? I don't wanna keep somebody around if I'm keeping them down, if I'm, you know what I'm saying, mistreating them. That wouldn't even be that wouldn't even be right, you know what I mean? Um I wouldn't feel right for myself to be, you know what I'm saying, just um maliciously being with somebody, bringing them down, tearing them down. I don't think that's love. You know what I mean? So, but everybody's definition different. So how you, how you feel, Sheree? Um, so my definition of unconditional love is, um, like I saw somebody say in the comments that um, it's levels. Um, so when you unconditionally love somebody, not saying that it's okay for them to beat your ass at one level and cuss you out at one level. But we all go through trials and tribulations and changes because at the end of the day, we are all human. So when you love somebody unconditionally, like you'll sacrifice um, and deal with a lot of things because you feel like it was just a moment in time in the relationship where, you know, it was just, they were just having that moment, not making excuses for it, but it may only happen in that moment, but never happen again. Um, And you're able to accept it for what it was with that person. And um, you're willing to move on and grow with that person. So um, for me, um, unconditional love is when you're able to accept any and everything with that person flaws and all and not feel like um you know that they um that you will love them any less because of whatever y'all may have went through in that time and of you know y'all relationship at the time like because we all go through changes in our life and i want somebody to accept me for me unconditionally because I'm human at the end of the day and we all make mistakes. We all go through trials and tribulations. And if you can't be with somebody that's going to accept that and understand that, then they don't, I don't feel like they genuinely love you or unconditionally anyway, because even getting married is death do us part sickness and health, richer or poor like trials and tribulations, all that. And you have some people who really don't understand what that means. Like they don't understand, like when you take these vows, like I don't know if anybody really truly pay attention to the vows that they are repeating, you know, sickness and health, death do us part, like not, uh, yeah. So if you get broke one day, I'm out. Or if you just so happen to can't function one day, I'm out. No, like you have to be there and have to know that that person has your back no matter what. When you when you decide to get married anyway. Now, in a relationship, you know, of course, it's different. Like people just feel like, 
you know, I'm not putting up with certain things, you know, because we're not married or we're not together in the stature of being, you know, married and everything else like that. When you get married, not saying that she's supposed to just turn the cheek on some stuff, but I mean, some things you might just have to just chalk it a little bit. It's going to hurt. You know what I'm saying? And I know that. And no, nobody deserves a lot of things. But this is really what you signed up for, to be honest. So that's my definition of it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, I like that. I, I like the fact that, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, you, uh, you're just looking at it like, look, this is what I signed up for. You know what I mean? It's going to be, you know, good, bad. You know what I mean? And tough times, you know, this and the third. But, you know, it's, it's a journey that we're going to be in together. So that's one of the things I respect, you know what I'm saying, appreciate about you. It's funny because, like, nowadays we talk a lot about, like, um, like different terms and conditions, like conditions. Like, you know what I mean? You hear some guys saying, like, you know, um, a female got to have this, that, and the third. You know what I mean? Um, what, what do the female bring to the table? You know what I mean? Or female saying, um, I can't be with no dude that, you know, don't have this, that, and the third. And sometimes you just, like, wonder, like, how many of these relationships are, you know, um, like tr like tr a true connection, you know, and how many of them are just for the benefits that come with that person. And that's kind of deep because you can get caught up in a relationship where you're with somebody and, you know what I mean, you may or may not, you know, you might feel like, all right, man, this is, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I am I love this situation, woo -woo, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're hitting it off. I'm really falling for this person. And lo and behold, this person is really for you, you know what I mean, with you for what you are bringing to the table or for what is benefiting them at the time. So when you talk about, like, highs and lows, ups and downs, I think some of that is important because you can – kind of gauge your partner based on, you know, the things that they're willing to take. Now, if if at the first time, you know what I mean, you make a mistake, your partner like, I'm going, like, that that wasn't real love. So sometimes, you know what I mean, these goods, these bads, ups and downs, I know they, they, they be a lot, you know, it's a lot of weight on you, but it's like, at the end of the day, you start to really realize who truly loves you. You know what I'm saying? Who really is there rocking with you for who you are and not just what, you know, you can quote unquote bring to the table. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a discussion too. Yeah, a lot of people don't um, really know um, the true definition of saying I do. When you say I do, that means that you take any and everything that goes with that person. Um, and you have to be strong enough and willing enough to understand that there is going to be different levels of your relationship. I don't care what nobody say about marriage. I give a take, <laughs> child. The best years of our life probably just happened in 2020. And we've been married for 12 years. So there is no, oh, it's the honeymoon stage and all that. That's probably like when y'all first started talking. But when you get married, listen, it's rough. It is really like, it's like bring out the guns, everybody ducking and dodging, bullets, all kinds. Of, like we out here like at war when you get married. It's crazy. You would think like it's supposed to be paradise and glitz and glamours and all the pretty flowers. No, it's not at all, at all. And I don't want nobody to believe that it is because if they say that it is, they're lying. It's people like who be arguing like days before they get married. I think we was doing that. So if they lie and say, oh, it's, oh my God, it was the best of my life. It's, everything's been, they're lying. They're lying, okay? They're lying because it's not. It's really only what you make it and only the strongest survive. I'm going to tell you that because it ain't for everybody. Everybody's not built for this lifestyle. Everybody is not built to have um, 
longevity in relationships and marriage in marriage. Nobody has that 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 uh strength and willingness to just get through what comes with the whole overall situation. And it doesn't necessarily have to be um cheating. It be finances, it be kids, it could just be the fact that you're so used to just it being you. And now it's like you went from it being you to you, him, your kids, all this extra stuff going on. You be like, what the heck did I sign up for? What did I sign up for? It's not, it's really, it's not made for the week. I can tell you that. This life is not made for the week at all. So let me let me ask you a question. Do you think, and I ain't going to say it's like, it ain't even like a weak or strong thing for us. It's really like, um, you know, sometimes it could be, it could be, it, it could be one partner that's in it, you know what I mean, with 100% and another partner that's in it with, you know, 60% and it might not, it might not work, you know what I mean? So some people might have the right tools and, and is prepared and ready, but might have a partner that, again, like I said, you rocking out with somebody, you ready for the long haul, lo and behold, they just in it so they can hitch they you know they wagon to to your to your cart and so they can get across the river but for real for it's not really you know they're not looking at it like oh this is something that i'm you know looking to lock in with forever you know what i mean even and we laugh about it bizarre on her at her uh when her vows they was like the, the the pastor was like for richer for poor she was like for richer and for richer <laughs> He was like, no, 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 for for richer and for poor. She was like, oh, I heard you, for richer or for richer. So she was like, I ain't claiming no poor shit, you know what I mean? And you know what I'm saying? It was it was funny, you know. But like in some situations, you know, people in in a situation is is definitely true love. Like their whole story is just like a, it's damn near like a fairy tale. So, um, hey cousin, like, happy you know birthday, what I mean? cousin. Who birthday? Did you Bray and Tori birthday today? Oh, twins. That's right. Happy B day, cuz. Yeah, but uh, she t she she talking because at the end of the day, like she loved that man for real, for real. Oh, yeah, so I feel like for for him, she she gonna she gonna put up with it. She gonna put up with it. Like I said, it is it's only for the only the strong survive. And the reason why I say that is not meant for the weak because it's not. If you cannot. Again, if you with somebody because they got the glitz and the glamour, and then when the hey April, and then when the glitz and the glamour uh start dimming down, and y'all looking at each other like what's the next move? And you ready to walk away after a year because now you done seen the true colors, it ain't meant for you. It's not. Cause now it's like, okay. We need a game plan. Like, what? what's the plan? Like, are you going to sit there and just sit back and depend on this person that you said I do to? Or you going to do you going to get in where you fit in and you just going to adjust and this is just going to make the situation better. So let me ask you a question. Do you think that, you know, what I'm saying, do you think that, you know, our relationship is changing? You know, what I'm saying we have. Um, and, and some of it is good. Some of it, you know what I'm saying, is not so good because, you know, we had situations back in the day where relationships, marriages and all that lasted for lifetimes, you know, and I don't even know for some of that is interesting because some of it may not have been um, just love per se, because it was some marriages that was arranged. It was some marriages that they needed, you know, each other to survive, you know, and that and it turned into a love. But do you think with this day and age with everybody being so independent, you know what I mean, do you think we even got it in us like how we did back in the day when we needed each other? Like, you know, do you think as a society, like, we got it we got it in us to even take somebody's shit for life? You know what I'm saying? Like, do, you know, like... I mean, I, I feel what up, like boss? anything is possible. Um, again, like I said last week, I feel like it take a village 
to um, maintain a strong and healthy marriage nowadays. And I feel like a lot of people don't believe that. It's just like raising a child. Like, I feel like you need that support. And when you don't have the proper support, if you can, if I can't go to, to certain family members with my situation and f and walk away feeling like, oh, they gonna hate, they gonna hate my husband after this conversation. Uh 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 uh, Cam, uh, -uh. don't be coming on here crying. Um, they gonna hate, they gonna hate my husband. I don't want to feel like that. I want to go somewhere and know that they're gonna give me great advice, and they are gonna let me under know that this is just a time in the marriage that it's a struggle, but y'all gonna get through this. And I need, I want that type of support because at the end of the day, like that, that lets me know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Like, is this is just not the end of it. It's not over. It's not the end all to be all. Cause again, we all go through trials and tribulations in our relationships and in our marriages. And if you got people around you, that's negative. Um, I don't know who this person is. I'm scared. Um, when you when you don't have <laughs> that <men>. support system, <laughs> when you don't have that support system, it, it makes it difficult. It makes you second guess your situation. And this is somebody that you say that you love. Like when you love somebody, you're not going to sit back and listen to nobody shouldn't have that type of effect where they can tell you something. You're just straight listening to them. You should have somebody your own mind to be like all right i hear what they saying but i love this person i care about this person like you know yeah. making excuses for him a little bit like you know what i mean it's a mistake like i mean i, I don't want to believe like they genuinely don't love me or don't care for me in that moment on whatever they however they may have hurt me at the time you know, I don't, I don't know. I maybe I'm just, I don't know. Well, no, because I was going to say, like, for Jamal's question, like, do I think we'll make it now based off of the, the circumstances are different now than they were before? Because remember, we talked about this in like maybe a couple weeks back. A lot of times, women stay because they had to. They depended because they didn't have their own. They didn't have a way to start, and that's how it was designed back then. Now you have so many more women who can do a lot of things on their own if they had to or they don't depend they like they're not solely only dependent on you meaning like my mom always told me never want for nothing and be able to take care take care of yourself not of yourself like it's just you it'd be you your family or whatever because we like i said before i feel like now you got two different type of people right you got people who want to be in love because the true reason for love and they actually it's more than two but they want to be in love because they truly believe in the love and you have people who are in love or want to act like they don't even know what love is. They don't know what they want, but they're coming in with conditions. And then you have the person who, you know, has like a mixture of both. Like I got some conditions, but I still love you because of who you are, despite of, in spite, of, you know, in spite of whatever you got going on. I mean, I honestly feel like unconditional love like it's crazy because my aunt Gwen who married us uh gave me a book to read before it was called love conditionally I gotta remember the name but it was talking about this title and um I talked about this with my husband when we were like you know premarital therapy like if love is unconditional then you should people think that love unconditional love means you tolerate anything Mm -hmm. And that's not what that means. It means that I love like children and parents. You love each other unconditionally because you came from each other. Someone mm -hmm. from the outside in, you have to grow to love them in that way based off of y'all getting together, your camaraderie, your, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like you, you kind of have to go in it with the right mindset and what you really want. You got to know the person who you with. And sometimes, like I said, you, sometimes you meet the representative for a while before you actually mm -hmm. meet the real person, which is very hard and is confusing, especially when you've already built yourself to the point of unconditional love. That's mm -hmm. the part where it hurts because I love you in spite of anything that you've got going on. But mm -hmm. I have conditions on how I want myself to be respected because at any moment in that time, if I feel like I'm being disrespected and you're not considering me 
and how I feel, then that's when some, now conditions got to come into this. When I love you unconditionally, but I also my worth and my mental peace and all that stuff, it means more to me than that. And at the end of the day, that's why it takes some people so long to get out of bad stuff mm -hmm. because of that mindset of I have to, I want to be with this person. I'm wholeheartedly with, I'm, I'm for them. And no matter what they do, I'm going to, I'm not going to just walk away at the first sight of things. Right. I mean, I have conditions. Cheating is one of those conditions, but I make that very clear from the jump. Cause then, cause all you're telling me is that you don't love me. Ain't no way you love me. And I don't care what nobody say. You can't love me and choose to choose to hurt me. That's a choice. Mm -hmm. Because my unconditional, everything I'm do is thinking about how I may how I may affect you. And that's where the unconditional part, just like you do with your kids. You make decisions for your kids and for, for the best, you know, for the best for them because you know, you love them unconditionally, you want the best for them, you want nothing but you know. And when you get to that point with somebody who you met as a stranger at one point in your life, it's hard when you feel like you've been betrayed in that way. And so in some mm -hmm. ways, there are conditions to what you would tolerate in your unconditional love, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some like people I know what love is and some people, some people do and some people don't. It, it really depends. depends on where the love was shown to them, how love was shown to them, mm -hmm. for them to know how to either give it or receive it. Because you got people who can't receive love, and that's hard. That's even worse than not being able to give it. I mean, actually, they, it's probably equal. Because the person who don't know how to receive it probably doesn't know how to give it. And I could be speculating, but usually that's what it is. Because mm -hmm. some people don't even really know how to have a relationship anymore. You know, to even get to the point of really feeling like they love somebody. Because nowadays, it's always being every relationship is judged off by being judged by the cover. It's not being judged off of the person. Like, they haven't really got to know the person. It's like when the dust settle, like I said, when it ain't glitz and the glamour no more. Now they sit next to you. They done took their wig off. They done took their makeup off. They done took the heels off. They done took the girdles off. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they done let they it done all out. They done up their whole life. And you turn around like... Of course that. You know, but you know what? That's I, true because you know what? You have... You know how many people say like, you know... I've had a great representation of what marriage is because my parents were married for this amount of time and they loved you. You know how many parents don't show their kids the stuff they go through? You would never know every night your mom and dad argue. Probably damn near was in a fist fight because they don't show it to you. But the thing is this, like you said, it's a cover that they're looking at. And the part that sucks is that a lot of times people stay together because of children, one, because they didn't have anywhere else to go and because they maybe didn't have the self-esteem to think they could get more or could mm -hmm. get somebody else or they were worth that and vice versa. Or they just stuck it out because they're just like, listen, we go through hard times and you stick it out. But I promise you, all these these covers that y'all see of great marriages, even like things people put on social media, you know, cup marriage goals, couple goals. That's really just for show. Cause you, I mean, not to say that they ain't got real goals, but yeah. it's a facade. Like when people say, "Oh, you know, y'all the mirror. You the mirror of marriage. We, I want to follow." Me and my was like, "Don't no, I know you don't. Don't follow this. <laughs> Go follow your own because you don't even know. You don't even know." <laughs> no, but I think I yeah. think some of that is like in terms of, and that's a that's actually a good point that you made. You know what I mean? Finally, <laughs> um, it's a good point that you made in terms it's of yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> so no, but it was a good point that you said that a lot of um. You know, households that you know, the parents hid a lot of things that they were going through. You know what I mean? And to some degree, I kind of agree with that because I think that some things, you know, aren't for your children to see. I don't think they should necessarily have to see you struggle. I think that, you know, somebody used it as example, like yo, like if the the, the airplane having turbulence, you know what I mean? I'm gonna look at the uh, the airline stewardess. If that motherfucker start acting up, it's a problem. But yep. if it's turbulence and the airline student, she looking all relaxed, she chilling, then it's like, cool, I'm chill. And so I think it's good for, you know, us to, you know, hold it down and not expose them to, 
you know, so much. Now, conversations about marriage, real conversations about how real it can be, you know I mean, that needs to be had. But I think, you know what I mean, I do, I do prefer that, um, you know, that mindset of having a relationship and not, exposing your children to you know what i'm saying all of y'all bs because you know what i mean i just you know i would prefer you know what i'm saying to leave my kids out of you know a lot of what we may go through because some of it really is just bullshit it's, it's ticky tack it's small um i'm also not ashamed when and if we do because then at that point it is a glimpse of how real it can be and sometimes it's good because now our children can see how we resolve issues now it can see us all right let's you know what i mean Let's be more rational. Let's, you know, compromise. Let's co be cooperative. And, you know what I mean, it helps them to kind of see, okay, boom, you can have a little conflict, a disagreement, a misunderstanding, miscommunication, and still, you know, work through it, you know, in a loving way. You know what I'm saying? So. I was going to say that. I think it's, if it's, oh, it's okay if they see you guys have an argument, but have them see you guys show love to each other just as much as the bad part because you don't want them to only see that the bad part because then that's all they're going to it's either going to turn them away from marriage or it's going to make them it's going to make them think that that's all marriages are about or that's how they should be treated or stuff like that because I'll tell you for a long time like my mom and dad would have been married for probably what 40 years now and I've never heard them argue once but coming to mm. find out after my dad passed away oh they had arguments and the arguments they had I was like, what? This way, this should be on Jerry's finger. <laughs> and then, like, you know, trying to, like, question, have questions and be like, okay, so why would you do this, mom? Why did you make that decision, mom? And finding out all this stuff, you just like, yo, yo, you like, and then you, you, you just be so confused, like, hold on, this was going on? And my dad did what? And he, and he accepted what? And he, you know, right. and that just goes to show how much somebody truly loves you in spite of anything you might do to them to hurt them now that doesn't mean they're stupid necessarily it just means that they may just have a different heart that is more open to forgiving and hoping that it's going to be better but you know, like i said i ain't never heard my mom and dad argue but when hey, I found out about a lot of stuff i was like what the heck is going on up in this piece right like I'm like the math ain't mathing, mom. The math ain't mathing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and then of course back then the era that they in right now, they don't like to talk about because a lot of times back then they wanted that facade. It was all about mm -hmm. how you present it on the outside. You made me look bad when you get out of this house. I don't care if we was arguing all day. We go outside holding hands. And so it's kind of like <laughs> you wouldn't even know that there was an issue, which I don't know if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing, but it's kind of like now, as an adult, and you go to your parents, and you're married, right? You go to your parents for advice about marriage, and then you find out about stuff that happened with them. It's just almost like, can you give me advice about that? Because I, I don't know. If I was your friend back then, I would have like, you making wrong moves. She said, so you saying be fake. Basically, Seth, they was out here faking it. It's faking it till they make it. <laughs> no, not faking their I, love for each other but faking the things that was going on in right they yeah. you know that that image they didn't want people to look at them as like they couldn't they couldn't make it work like they they just everything was just all over the place which i understand that to a degree because to the people and to thirsty people who out there lurking, it can be a sign of weakness that is not a strong foundation. You so, open up a window. You open right, up an invitation. Like, prime example, that's how people come into the situation. Like, that's is that my homie? Like, oh, they have an issue. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, he don't love his wife. Or, oh, she don't love her husband. Let me try to holler at her because clearly she ain't happy. He ain't happy. You know, what's up? But it's only the strongest survive with that because then, you know, it's up to that person to take the baby or not. But you got to also realize all that hiding, it affects your children. I know you don't want them to see the bad stuff, but the secrets and stuff like that that you keep in, then they realize as adults, this is why I'm acting the way I'm acting because I didn't know or because that happened. Then that's when you got the, that's when you got a whole different 
ball game where man you hear a lot of people talking about how much mental abuse they had from their parents and their family by itself just on how they raised them how they talked to them how they treated them and they refuse to do that with their own kids mm -hmm. yeah i mean some of that chadwick yeah. oh, my gonna, homie gonna chadwick we're gonna get yeah, chad my chad roll, roll, roll that window up man you know what i mean you, you burning this up with the wind blowing man you know what I mean? I tried to mute myself. You burning me out. I don't know why you still in the bathroom. Is you that constipated? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. He busting it wild. Go ahead, Chad. Say what you got to say. I'm done. <laughs> oh no, he. I think. I think he doing a unit. Ah, that's what it is. And he got a non-disclosure agreement with the person he Harry cut. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mind your business, sir. Not nice. <laughs> George Jefferson. <laughs> what is today's topic Shit. about? Is today's topic about unconditional love? Yes. Okay. So, do you guys want my opinion on unconditional love? Because I sure. think I sparked this last week, if I may say so myself. Yes, <laughs> you did. Yes, you did. Unconditional Hello. love only exists for your children. It should not be no other such thing as unconditional love. That's fake. That means people could take advantage of you when they decide to change. And you will love them for whatever. No. Guess what? I love my brother to death. But if I find out on N NBC Action News that he touching little boys or something, he done. The love is gone. I don't know who. He a nigga in the street. I don't know. If you ask me. Unconditional <laughs> love does not exist unless it's for your children. You don't think that your children... What if you have a situation, and I, I know this one sounds crazy to everybody. You have two kids, right? You love them unconditionally. The one child does something, say, like, molest or do something or hurt the other child. Who are you choosing? Is it still unconditional? You can't unlove your kids. <laughs> you, you can, can, you can, you can Your kid can move to Texas, and you might not talk to them every day. But at the end of the day, you can't unlove your children. So if your child is a mass murderer, I agree murderer, to disagree, but I mean maybe so. If they are mass murderer, you still love them? Exactly, I ain't murdering. So this is also the thing. Also, the thing with parents is there's been a misconception in the black community that if your kid leave your house, he ultimately represents you, and I disagree with that too. I ultimately don't think that's always the truth because you could teach your kids right. All day, and they could do wrong. That's not a. It's not a representation of who their parents are, because you can have crackhead parents and become a, sex, a success story. That's not because of your parents. I think that's so, with a lot of cultures. I don't think it's just the black community because I've heard a story. I ain't like never that. been no other. I ain't never been no other complexion but black. So that's what I'm speaking from. But ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, okay. like there is a lot of misconceptions. Like you, your kid becoming a mass murderer. The reason why people will cut them off is because it makes them look bad. It, it, hey, no, because you're a mass murderer. You might kill me. Oh, my God. We're going hypothetically too far. <laughs> your kids are your kids. <laughs> That's it. No husband. I don't care. I'm married. I'm happily married. I wouldn't choose nobody else over my wife. I'm in a great place. I would never unconditionally love my wife. It's conducive to how much she loved me and how long we getting along. Ow. That richer or for poorer and all better or for worse. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's conditioned. My wife can't go out here and decide that her new job, she can't go out here and decide her new job is prostitution. And that's for worse. That's not for better. And I'm just going to stick around. That's cap. He might be good at what she do. Okay, I know. She's like, I own the money. I mean, why yeah. you saying? Yeah. I'm day. married to her, so I got to say that she's the best at what she do. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, she's the best at what she do for me. Yeah, and nobody else can't sense, tell me, oh, you, you know your sense. wife, she got that, uh, you know, she got that, uh, them dimples. Like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> y'all just, y'all just, y like, I just think that that's a crazy mindset to have. Just like I was just talking to somebody, like, words have power. And we create these own, our own death these words and it becomes those things that behoove us oh, from happiness and understanding. Signals. Huh? I say Nick, your signal, my brother, your signal. How do you get that off? Can you hear me now? No, no it's breaking up. Like you're going in and out. But y'all heard oh, me say damn. that. Y'all lying. Oh, it's going in and out.
Chad. It's going in and out. We can hear can certain tell words. Chad it's going in and out, y'all. All right, can y'all hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. What in the sprint? Um, what I was saying was words have power, and we start to believe these words and in, in these in these mindsets and thinking processes that actually behoove us for happiness and, and real understanding. They said unconditional love is when you never say no. Exactly. No. 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 I feel like, like I was saying before, I think unconditional is like, I love you in spite of, but I have conditions on how I want to be treated. And if you're not going to treat me that way, those where the conditions come. doesn't mean I don't love you. Exactly. It doesn't mean I don't love you in spite of the things that you come with. I never agree with you, but God damn, I agree with you right now. <laughs> That's because because <laughs> it's under it's like you gotta hard. have your you gotta have you, made two good points today. you gotta have your own conditions. I love you unconditionally to the conditions that I agree to. You can't treat me like shit and expect me to still love you that way. It's just not. It's just it just can't go that way. That's fake. Just like people say, you know, I don't do these things right. because I'm a per, uh, I'm a perfectionist, but perfection doesn't exist. So that means you're tr you're striving for something you'll never attain. So that means you're just not doing something because you think, oh, I'm a perfectionist. I want it to be perfect. It'll never be perfect. So no, why nothing are we trying is perfect. Exactly. So that, that's what I'm talking about with the mindset. Your mindset, oh, I'm a perfectionist. You told yourself that you're a perfectionist. The lies we tell each other, I'm not a morning person. Bullshit. You tell yourself you're not a morning person. But if guess what? South Philly got crabs, you know, the female crabs for the eight the crabs for two dollars. <laughs> Niggas are getting up at six in the morning. <laughs> that don't mean you're a morning person, just mean you got up for the cause. And you went but you tell yourself <laughs> you, <laughs> you want some Jordans, you up. Come on, Chad. It's time oh, to change I mean, the carry, brother. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I gotta get up in the morning and go to Sprint or T Mobile or something. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm just saying, like, why would you want to be a punching bag to somebody's... T why would you let somebody uh, be a punching... Your heart be a punching bag to somebody? I unconditionally love... That's not even a power you want to give somebody. That's like me saying... That's like me playing box... I mean, me being a boxer. And before the fight, I tell the fighter, uh, 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 I can't... I, I, I don't know how to punch off my back foot. I can't... You can't give... Some things are internal. You can't give somebody... You can't give them your uh, cheat sheet, your cheat codes. Oh, I love you unconditional. So you could slap me around. You could cheat on me. You could beat on me. You could take all my money out of my account, buy you whatever you want. <laughs> and I'm going to love you. I love you. You can't do no wrong, Jamal. I love the ground you walk on. I love the hair you cut. I love the push-ups you do. No. Because <laughs> no matter what, we could all be people who don't take advantage. But when you think you got somebody, yo. If Maul found somebody who could get him clippers for cheap and for free, all he got to do is do something, I don't know, for free, he going to tell all his homies, yo, man, that girl Kate down there at the clipper store, I got her own pocket. She give me whatever I want for free. And he's not naturally a person to take advantage of people, but when people give you the, the floodgates and they open, it's over. Yeah, I, I, agree, I agree with that. And I also agree with, you know what I'm saying, unconditional love can be fake because I think people will take more depending upon Cheating, being and skiing. You know I mean, I, I think I think people would lie, bro. Based on what you got to offer. So if you got a lot to offer, motherfuckers is gonna take more. You know what I mean? You're gonna take more from a millionaire than you're gonna take from, you know what I'm saying, somebody that's on the ass sleeping on your couch. But and if you April, if you I'm April, gonna... that's not unconditional love as long as you got great sweatpants, is what she said. <laughs> April, you want to get on here and defend your name? Because he's... About, I could jump April, off. you want to let him talk to you like that? I'm going to jump off so April you can come in talk to you and defend like that, herself. <laughs> now, why would you let him talk to you about like Please, that? no, because you know she got a bottle of Ziffindel. I mean, a box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, somebody said only if you... Ron said only if you broke, you will take more. Yeah, no, nah, that's a fact, though. People will take more based on what somebody else got. As soon as Chad Ochocinco didn't get with that last team, Evelyn was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm reporting this here, but And I'm sure he didn't hear The devil Chad. is not a lie. <laughs> the <laughs> devil is not a lie. <laughs> first of all, I want to say your Instagram etiquette is terrible. When you first get on, you scan the room and be respectful. My man Jamal was talking. Some BS, though, but he was talking, and you cut him off. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was saying hello I, to the I, world. Okay. I did not know he knew Evelyn. He, well, Evelyn well, called Ma and said, you know he ain't playing in the NFL. What you will not do, Sir Chad, is control the room. You won't do that. I'm in here now. There we go. <laughs> Get him, April. Carry on, Jamal. I'm listening. Listen, y'all got it. Listen, y'all got, got the floor. Talk to us. <laughs> so, so what were we talking about? Unconditional? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because I'm trying to stay on topic. <laughs> Something so, you failed to do miserably. Oh, please. <laughs> Anywho, we go to beach. unconditional. Unfortunately, I would have to uh, agree with the peanut gallery at the bottom um, that unconditional love stops with your children. I feel like relationships and marriages are circumstantial. Just my opinion. It depends on the circumstances. And that's what determines if you want to stay or not. Yeah, that's it. What does have to do with circumstances? What are you mumbling? No. What does circumstantial have to do with circumstances? <laughs> Cir circumstantial meaning different circumstances. Depending on... <laughs> What may happen? <laughs> Chad, your phone's breaking up, my brother. It's time to give it to the metro. Maybe, maybe no, you should be over. Just, and no, I actually just. I, I actually <laughs> muted it. Hey, Mo, you laughing oh, too hard? What okay. you feeling inside your heart, brother? Come on, man. We what you feeling you inside right your heart, brother? Yeah, I mean, you got a lot going on. You got windshield wipers on. You know what I mean? Got the windows down. <laughs> you know. And you know? they said, and no guns also said, is that from negative experiences? Mm. Is what from negative experiences? Your opinion on... on I don't ever uh, want to be on that page, so whatever none, no guns on said, I'm agreeing with them. Okay, uh, so I want to respond to that. Of course, my ideas around relationships are because of my human experience, but also my lived experience. Again, I'm a hairstylist. A lot of people in my chair. I worked in a unisex salon. I heard the conversations from men. So I believe that I'm pretty uh, well-rounded on what's going on in the environment to make that conclusion. Anything else, sir? <laughs> That, that still doesn't else? make you an expert. That still doesn't make what you say valid because Here, here's, you heard here's one the or thing. two people say that in your chair. Here's the thing. We're not in a space to challenge validity. Everything in this room is by opinion, someone's opinion. Nobody has done the research and came up with, you know, some support of our opinions. Now, if we want to do that, we can do that too on the next episode. I'm good at that. <laughs> Oh, what kind of, what you was drinking tonight? You are. <laughs> Christian, Damn, Christian I'm brother. just saying. Water. You are. Damn. You I'm are. just saying. Okay. So all, all I'm saying is, you know, that's just my opinion. You know, many people can make opinions, but when I make an opinion, it, it's striking. You know when you I make mean? an opinion, <laughs> it's an opinion. <laughs> it feels like somebody has been popped on the hands or something. <laughs> I don't know. And I only had one glass of Zinfandel. I'm actually on a half of glass right now. What size is the glass? So you're getting the so you're getting the sober version of me. I never met him. Do you do you want to be the next face on No Guns Zone? Keep playing with me. You want to be the uh -oh, next one? Chad. Uh oh, Chad. Uh, one, these woman, woman destroys I wanna, I wanna, black man in a podcast debate. Listen, I want to. I want to. That's going to be the headline. <laughs> I want to run this. I want your opinion on this. All right, this is a uh, from an Instagram post. I'm gonna play it. A man has to constantly be moving towards his goal and his vision in order for his woman to respect him. A, a man is not supposed to chase love in a relationship. A man is supposed to chase purpose in a relationship. The woman chases the love in a relationship. The moment those dynamics. Um, opposite, then they no longer attracted to each other. At least the woman no longer be attracted to him. She busy, now he's chasing love in the relationship. When he's busy, she's chasing love. 
right? But instead, when he's chasing purpose, it keeps the dynamics balanced at all times, right? Being that our house, different. Come on, y'all need phone for us, hey. <sighs> We can't hear it anymore, y'all. I actually shared that post in my story today. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I know I just gave like a little snippet. I just thought it was interesting because, you know, what I mean, sometimes we talk, well, we talk about love heavy, you know, what I mean, and um, I don't know. I, sometimes it's like, I don't know what love actually is. You know, what I mean, I know it's a feeling. I know it's also an action. You know, what I mean, where it comes from, why people get it, maybe it's how a person looks or whatever. And sometimes it is what people provide. But some people may choose or want time over, you know I mean, they, they want time. And if, if they have a man at home or even a woman at home that is, you know, pushing for their purpose, whether they're an entrepreneur, whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? Sometimes one can feel like, you know, um, the household is balanced because they're not getting the time they want, but you may have a partner that's still pushing for something that's going to be better for the household. And again, that partner may be looking at the purpose that it has for his family as the unconditional love because I want to take us to the next level where somebody else's definition of unconditional love may be uh, spending more time together. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I just was, when I looked at that, I just thought it was an interesting topic. What, what's your perspective on it? If I may interject, I think that that is 100% correct. Um, because a guy's purpose is conducive what we're made to do, our, 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 you know, what we're bred to be, you know, providers and security. And our job is to find our purpose because our purpose allows us to protect, protect I mean, provide for what we're supposed to our responsibilities. Regardless if a man is with a woman or single, his job is still to find his purpose. Women, in my opinion, fall in love with a man who's doing his job. Oh, he got a good job. He, he do this. He got this going on. You fall in love with what he's doing already. Now, when it becomes a woman complaining about he don't have time, I just feel like, and I could be wrong because I know probably women feel the same way, but women always want the exact opposite of what they're receiving. They could get all of, you can give them all of the, you know, all of the things that they want as far as finances and all of that. He worked, he makes sure all the bills is paid. All that's good until it's not good no more. Then they want time. Then if a nigga quit his job and be around them all day, how you don't go off time with your friends? How you don't go get the job? It's always the opposite. So the only thing a man can Your phone's breaking up, sir. The only thing a man can do that is transitional is find his purpose. Because he's going to have to protect and provide regardless if he's in a relationship or not. Okay, I have some feedback. <laughs> um, to, to some degree, I agree with that post. I actually shared it on my story today. But I believe that that same narrative can apply to both genders. I think overall the man and the woman has to be fulfilled within themselves for anything to work. Just my opinion. That's the first time I ever agreed with you in my life. You spend so much time trying to be my, my rival for whatever reason. I don't know why. I say some great, some great shit. <laughs> no, and a lie detective said that was a lie. <laughs> I, I, respect, I respect that that perspective because um Sharice, I don't like the way you laugh at his jokes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to hey Bo, I got a question for you. Huh? I got a what question got? for you. Oh. I, I'm listening. Are you oh, April, okay. So, you know, nowadays everybody talk about, oh, I don't want to be around nobody who don't reciprocate my energy, who ain't on what I'm on, right? That means, to me, that is only one type of way to love somebody or to support somebody, right? So my question is, is it possible that people put too much pressure on other people because they don't love the same exact way that they love? Is that mm -hmm. what reciprocation really is? Like, if I, I love, I love, 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 love you, you got to love, love, love me back to actually make me happy? 
See, see, that's my whole point. Like, when dating, I don't like the idea of someone Jamal. trying to tweak who I am. So accept me for the love language that I have, and I'll accept the love language that you have. And if it works, it, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm more, I'm more up on a deeper Jamal. level. I'm more on a deeper level. Like, how, does pe how do people uh, quantify love? Like, if I would get up in the middle of the night, I'm tired. It's 3.33 3.33 in the morning, and my wife asked me to go get her some iced tea with ice, right? She's basically mad because I won't go because she would do it for me. So just because she would go get me a cup of ice at 3.33 in the morning, it seems to be I don't love her as much as she do because I won't do the exact same thing. But is that's, that that's, that's, that's the point that I'm making. You just you just cleared it up. You just used a good analogy. I I have to accept that that's your love language. I have to be able to outweigh. Okay, he didn't go get the iced tea three o'clock in the morning, but when I was stuck on the road on ninety five, he came and got me. Or he makes sure the bills are paid and his food in here. I can't really be on no shit with him over something like that if I'm weighing out good and bad. So uh, we're not looking for identical reciprocation. We can't. That would that uh, uh, that's impossible. We're two different people. We're never going to be on the same level with a lot of things. Like Dang, we roll today. us as people, we come in this world with different moralities, different principles, different love languages different ways to think so it's impossible for that to happen i don't that care if you a, each other every a, day that must be a small cup <laughs> <laughs> don't start on me okay i'm being nice i'm just saying but that was a good point but i had asked jamal that question though <laughs> well i answered that what you ask what is what is does reciprocation have to be equal no, no, I, but I think, I mean, it, it balances it out and sometimes you, you give somebody, like sometimes we want to love somebody how we want to love them, but sometimes we got to love them how they want to be loved too, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you might, for your birthday, I don't know, you might like bangled earrings, but I might like to see you in, you know what I mean, um, a nice necklace, you know what I mean? So, it may be a, a birthday or whatever where the a present might be the bangle earrings that you like. It might be a birthday where the present might be a chain that I like to see you in, but it's both love. I shouldn't get no heat because I got you a chain. Like, Dag, you got me a chain. You know I like bangle earrings. Like, you're not even, you know what I'm saying, thinking about me or you, you know what I mean? Or that's not love or whatever. You're not paying attention. So I think, you know, it is going to be an imbalance because you're two different people and it's going to be different ways that Y'all love each other, you know what I'm saying? And I think when you're with somebody for a while, you start to kind of get them a little bit more over time, you know what I mean? And you and you try to, like you were saying, April, you try to tweak them less, you know what I mean? You just start to, it's kind of like accept them for they, who they are, but it's certain things that right. I think we all need to. And here's the thing, this this the funny dynamic, and let me ask you this, Chad. What's the difference between trying to change somebody and trying to help them be a better person? Because I think sometimes that can get confusing, too, because somebody might be like, yo, why are you trying to change me? This is just who I am. But if I'm your partner and I'm someone that you trust, you should trust me if I'm saying some things that could improve you and make you a better person. You know what I mean? So, that so what's be, the question? That's a good question? What was the question? What's the difference between changing somebody and what? What's the difference between um, trying to change who somebody is and trying to help somebody be a better person? I'm going to just say this fast because I'm very smart, I think. But it might not make sense. But Smart people just, never wait, have you, to announce that. But go ahead, Chad. Bingo. You ain't had to announce how many times you like men wearing gray sweatpants, but we ain't going to talk about that. Listen, um, some things need to be put out in the universe. All right, well, this is what I'm saying. I'm just saying what I was basically trying to... Uh, 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 elab what I elaborate get to was the fact that I didn't think about this all the way through so don't judge me on that I'm just speaking out of head off the top of my head that's what I was saying for the intelligent people but anyway um, I think that like when you're trying to help somebody be better for humanity 
that's totally different than somebody making somebody better for your own personal purposes. Right? So, like, if a person got a bad attitude and you can see humanity benefiting from them not having a crazy attitude or taking things too personal, I think that that's cool. But when you're trying to change somebody to benefit you, you, then I think that that's, that's different. I don't know if I answered the question. Hey, 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 hold up real quick. Hold, that's a good one. Stay right there. It's, it's, it's sometimes, and I've seen this, where men is like, you know what I mean? And I've seen this in general, you know what I'm saying? It's times where men is like, yo, like, why is black women coming off so, you know what I'm saying, so hard, like, so rigid? And then sometimes you hear black women say, well, you know what I mean, he couldn't handle me, you know what I'm saying? Or like, you know, that's just how I am. He, like, he's soft or whatever the case may be. But maybe that might be a man telling you, like, yo, you know what I mean? Nobody wants to deal with that type of energy. And it ain't even necessarily to change. It may not even, you know, change who you are in terms of, like, um, for my own personal. But it's, it's saying, hey, you could be a better person. Like, I, I, I like you being positive. I like that glow on you better than, you know what I mean, that, that scour. You know what I mean? And it's not... And, and, a lot of times, you know, that can be taken like, oh, he's weak. He can't handle it. But, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, men can take a lot of that, but they don't want to take that. They shouldn't have to deal with that. It's like, I, I don't think y'all should have to deal with a man with an attitude all of the time. So let's, since we're having that, that discussion, you know what I mean, in terms of bettering ourselves, is that something, you know what I mean, that can be oh, you are amazing in consideration? in terms of how women are treating men in households or just, you know, in general? Is that is that a dialogue that we could have that could that could be improved on? Ma, May I interject? I hold on, hold on, real, real fast. I'm sorry. I know ladies go first all the time, but we're going to change that dynamic today. Um, I like to say, um, Ma, you are amazing because you very creatively talk about things that you want to bring up because you've experienced these things. So if I can go back maybe six weeks ago, we right. finally met this lady named April who got on here and was yeah. talking about a guy that didn't like her and she called him weak and he was a buster and he was all of this because yeah. he didn't like how her personality was. So she didn't want to be with him. Is this what you're talking about, Ma? No, I, I actually, <laughs> that sounds like your own shit that you're trying to get off your chest. But carry on, my brother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> as I was carrying on, this is something that April was was talking about mm -hmm. and, you know i was talking about why does he have to be weak because he didn't want to deal with your personality not this alpha woman mojo thing but sometimes we mix sometimes we make things what they not just like sometimes first of all don't use me as an example to make a point and i'll clear up that point when you're finished go ahead <laughs> all right i appreciate that you know one thing about one thing about me, I'll put my back against the wall and fight anybody. So this is what we're going to do. <laughs> but, this is not, but this is not a fight. I know I know my responses may feel like punches, but it's not a fight. No, I'm just letting you know what I'm, I'm capable to do. But, um, but, but what that, I was but saying that's was... The thing. But that's the thing, uh, Grasshopper. You don't have to do that. <laughs> all right, well, all When right. you're great, just live in your greatness. You don't have to make any announcements. All right, well, you know I appreciate what I mean? that. Well, you don't you have to give any notices or anything. Well, you let the greatness finish talking. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's sort of like how, you know, you might walk in somewhere and a white woman might get smart. All of a sudden, she races. It doesn't apply to that all of the time, right? So if a man doesn't like a specific woman, it's not that he weak. It's just that you might got a personality that's not condu conducive with his personality. So I just think that we warrant things that don't really apply. Does that make sense? Jamal, Sheree, may I interject now? <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, <laughs> to clear up the six week ago conversation on episode, <laughs> who knows, um, I did mention that someone that I was dating tried to convince me that I was too much for him. Yes, I was too much. So, when people make such responses you have to analyze who they are and how they life is right so i'm a very social person i have a lot of friends um i'm pretty busy this is a person who doesn't have a lot of friends who wasn't really busy you understand what i'm saying so sometimes 
when people develop an opinion about you, you have to do a background check first before you really internalize what they're saying. And some mm -hmm. people, you just may be too much or less, but it doesn't mean that you won't be able to function in a relationship. It just means that that person wasn't for that person. And the other thing is when in a relationship, I think communication, healthy communication avoids all the um, misunderstandings. So if we're able mm -hmm. to have conversations in a healthy way, then I can get my point across. You can get your point across. I won't have to be so defensive. I will, I will sit and listen. If your approach is mm. respectful, if your approach sounds like concern and not control, it's a difference. Yeah. And if the gray sweatpants has a, a significant stature, first, then first the of all, gray sweatpants is something totally. See, see, that's the thing, Chad. You struggle with staying on topic. No, I didn't. I'm not struggling staying on topic. You said that you don't have nothing to do yes, with it, communication. It does. Nor anything does. else that we're talking about. Was that a strike against you in some kind of way? No, it does have something to do with it because <laughs> you said that sometimes you could be a little bit more submissive to a guy who has gray sweatpants. That was me, like, showing my sense of humor. I mean, <laughs> god damn, did you take it literally? <laughs> my god. Did, did I strike your sweatpants? <laughs> you know, one thing about, way? you know... <laughs> like, what is your problem? You know, this is crazy, because you know... One, what is your deal? One thing about Jamal is, I think, to be honest, and I don't think he told Sheree yet, or maybe she know and she's not allowed to say it, but I think Ma is really running for like some Why type of political... Why the hell am I up in... Hold up, hold up. We're not going to do that. No, 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 no. I First really all, think... Listen, this lets me know I will never rob a bank with Chad ever. You is definitely the nigga like, all right, Ma, come from behind the bushes. They got us. Come on, girl. Come on, Ma. Come from behind that tire that ran for no, more like over there. Talk, it's, it's more like, how did they see me and not him over there behind that bush? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was saying, I really think that Maul is running for some type of political seat or cabinet. Because every time I say something, I figure, like, it's the, you know, stand up and pee committee versus everybody. But he always getting quiet on me. And I don't really be liking that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm finishing up my haircut. So I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, he's not going to respond to nonsense. He's, yeah. he's that much of an intelligent man. He knows better. Mo, you got a unit? Oh, yeah. Am I, am I working on one? No, I'm saying, do you have one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Look, you wasn't even ready for that. <laughs> Look at you, sorry. <laughs> no, I don't got no unit. But you wasn't ready for it if I was. Look at you. I stumped you. Dang. I, I seen you with a fro before. Look at the picture right now. <laughs> no, that was a unit. That fro. That was you. Anyway, getting back to the get back, my whole thing is, you know what I mean? I'm glad we got to this portion of the, of the dialogue because our, for anybody that's just tuning in, um, our, our uh, main topic was define unconditional love. All right, And on our journey of this discussion, we went from defining unconditional love, um, a multitude of ways, and then we got into... Uh, changing got into uh, beneficial relationships or, or people benefiting from you know uh, others and then we got to um, people trying to change you you know what I mean um, somebody that fits who you are fits you know the type of person that you are versus somebody trying to change you and that led us to where we are now what is the difference between um, someone trying to change who you are and someone trying to help to improve you to be a better person. That's what I wanted to comment on more. But he interrupted me when I was speaking. And it changed the narrative of gotcha. the conversation. Okay. But if I can explain the difference. Yes. Somebody trying to change you is I don't like the way that you speak. I don't like the way that you dress. I don't like that's change. Cause this is the stuff I come mm -hmm. with and you're trying to remove that, which is my identity. So now you're trying to take my identity away from me. Someone that is trying to improve you is somebody who points out the good in you 
and then explains why the good should be improved. They don't point mm -hmm. out your flaws. They point out the good mm -hmm. in you and try to make you great. Got you, got you. And now here's the thing. Now, <laughs> where is it? A situation. <laughs> oh, Chad, no, no, Chad. I just, for a second, but I want you to, I want you to tap in on this. Um, but the the other thing is, you know, we've seen it on many accounts where, you know, we've gotten with people and they do help us to improve how we dress and things of that nature. You you just might not. You know, your your presentation may need improvement. You know what I mean? And so, whereas though I love who you are, I just want to improve, you know, your, how you look when you are making an appearance, whether it's going to a job uh, interview or whether it's we're going out to a function. You want a guy that's going to look a certain type of way. And you love who he is at his core, but you are all right, cool. You know, let, let me get him some, you know what I mean? Let me get him a, you know, a nice little outfit. This is how I like to see him look. You know what I mean? But I feel like that's a part of your standards when you already determined that you guys are going to be in a relationship. It's just certain standards that I'm going to have. You know what I mean? I, but so here's the thing. So let's just say, and this happens a lot too. You may have somebody that your relationship starts on one level. Let's just say it starts mm -hmm. where it's a sexual attraction. You know what I mean? And you guys hit it off. And then that leads to um, a, a actual, you know, more of a, a committed relationship. Now, when you was just, you know, in a sexual relationship with this person, their standard for how you dress didn't really matter. You know what I mean? Y'all link up or whatever. Y'all have a good time. You know what I mean? Um, Y'all might have your little hookah, little, you know, you might have some wine, whatever the case may be, Netflix and chill. So it's never been an issue. You know what I mean? And that chemistry was great, and you guys decided to take it to the next step. And so now you are doing functions. You are doing family functions, and you realize that, damn, this nigga is great, you know what I mean, when it comes to the sexual aspect and it comes to us, you know, chilling together and, and bonding on that level. But he can't dress for shit, you know what I mean? And I love him. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, I think this is something that we can improve on, you know what I mean? So... You know, though, I've, 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 I've actually I've, been through okay a situation just like that. Okay, and <laughs> I did not think that it would have any impact, but it did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think I think you're right with that. To some mm -hmm. to some degree, okay. if it's something that really means a lot to you, and that person just does not want to change over time it's going to become irritating and it's going to turn you off and you're just going to make a final decision you know what i'm out of here mm. but if you love the person and you know you value their opinion or their feelings you'll tweak some things now how you feel how you feel about that chat or sheree uh, you know sheree you want to go first no jamal got disconnected Oh. But I, again, um, it goes with the weigh-in. I feel like, I feel I feel like, like it depends. With, like it, it's not for that for the change thing. I think that's more so men trying to change women more than anything. Men don't. Women kind of we care, but we don't care about like what the man looks like, what he dressing like, what he mm -hmm. you know. Some, some things we just Aww. not care. We not that's not really a three been married too long, y'all. Discussion been for us, but I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't no, believe you I just know said exactly that. what that's like because my husband no listen I'm saying that because I'm speaking from a woman experience with my husband I'm not saying I was dressing like a hoe but I was being it <laughs> <laughs> she was and showing a leg or two awesome. and now all of a sudden that's how we met he was so in love and then as soon as he got me where he wanted to be it's like um yeah, so about that top. Yeah, because yeah, he want that for himself and nobody else. I know, but that. but but what but I'm saying modest. is this is my thing. And this is my thing. If you in a relationship with somebody, you know what you're walking into. That just can be how I express myself. Why does that mean that I'm trying to get attention from somebody else? That could just right. be as a person. Right. right. No, but this I'm is the thing. This... Hold up. Hold up, Chadwick. <laughs> I might be the type of person that this week I want my hair to be yellow. Next week I want my hair to be blue. You gonna be mad because that's how I express myself, or right. that's how I like to look. 
or you going to accept me for who I am and say, listen, that, that's just what she likes. What to do. people and, like, they learn and, to hate over time. Unfortunately. And, and, and on top of that, if we had a family function, you going to have my back. You're not going to give a shit about what your family think. Like, that's my boo. That's what she likes to do. She cute, ain't she? Period. Right. And shut it down. You going you gonna to shut the negativity down right then and there. You're not even going to give the family the opportunity to even think anything negative about the person that you with. But you also want to minimize the opportunity. I think the woman was changed for the man she deserved. Yeah, it depends yeah. on what the change is. And the change got to make sense. But you it can't also be a change wanna, out of selfishness. You want to limit the opportunity to Some people will make you change things prison. about you that has no... Like, yeah, this doesn't that, even make I'm sense why saying, you want like, me to change sometimes, this. Sometimes, like, some stuff just be just overboard. And I just feel like but you, you can't you can't just make for, try to force somebody to be somebody that they're not. A lot of times, that's why it hurts certain relationships. Because it's like, we met in the strip club. I was twirling in the strip club. I'm doing, I, I was I was getting my coin in the strip club. Mm -hmm. You met me. This is how we got together. Now, when I got right. with you, I love you unconditionally. It didn't matter that I met you in the strip club, and then all of a sudden, now we together. I didn't judge the relationship based off of that. You missing something, you. though. You missing, missing something. What you're missing is... What, you, what you're missing is, okay, maybe you were dressed a little provocative when he met you. That was something that attracted him to you. Now that I'm with you and I got you, I don't want other people to have those same luxuries that I've had. And there's a certain level of respect that you got to have for your relationship. And it don't have nothing to do oh, at a family function. Why? But dressing sexy does not mean you disrespect your relationship. But that's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Hear me out. What I'm saying is if a man is with you and he said, okay, you got your yellow thong showing and your butt crack out. Okay, cool. That's right, how it's I not got 2001. You. But I don't want you wearing that no more because we together and I don't want nobody to ever have to look at or, or fantasize about something that's with me. And then the second thing you said is that a family function, I'm not saying dress modest, but why would you want to put yourself in a position where you could possibly, I'm going to jail. Because yeah, I got no. So back. so what I mean, what I mean, this is what I'm saying. Like, what we get away from when we in a relationship, just in, just overall in general. I understand. Like, you want to tweak certain things because of the person that you with. You understand. You can see we all got common sense at the end of the day. But you cannot force or put that pressure on somebody from being. Uh, away from being themselves like they're being themselves you're not the way well, they look the, the way they carry themselves the way they dress if they got common sense they're going to adjust to their environment at the end of the day you're not going to make them feel like they can't be themselves because the now is making them feel like second guessing them on their they just taking away their confidence okay level. so what is the relationship like, left over women in full garbs with gloves on knee top yeah. they might look at their eyelashes and get turned on okay but this, like, but, but we're not talking about that we're talking about what is the relationship we're talking about what what is the relationship what you mean a commitment to it's another a commitment person. but a relationship is a huge big compromise so if you think you're going to go get into a relationship and still be an individual, you might as well go be individually by yourself. There is a well, great compromise. Well, well that's that the case. Can't, then then you can't the generalize relationships. Like, See, that's the problem. nothing to do with it. See, that's if the you problem don't think with so? society. You. Because of people you like you, you put you, these general, generalizations out there in the so world. So you're telling me you would let a mark. Every relationship is unique and has its own rules. So you telling me see, you got to stop thinking like here. that. You so you telling me you going to let Maul wear whatever he want to wear because he wants to be free? If he want to wear he can wear whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no, listen, but listen, no. Chad. This is what I'm saying. You got to tweak, you can tweak it. It's it's common sense. You want to be respectable to a th to a certain degree, but you're not going to make a person feel like oh, oppressed. Like, Oh, press. Oh, my God. So, let me give... And it's like... Let me... So, this is what I'll say, though. 
You know what I mean? And I do agree with I do I do agree with Chad. You know what I mean? And I also do agree with the fact that because somebody might have to meet their joint. It's like getting. It's you. Oh, it's my shit. Damn. All right, hold <laughs> it's better now. All right, so listen. I do agree with uh, I do agree with Chad. We know um, you would. And I also agree. No, I also agree with what April said in terms of each relationship is a unique understanding. I think a relationship, a marriage, very similar to a marriage, but a relationship is is a commitment slash contract. So whatever, whatever rules, whatever guidelines you guys put together in this contract, you know what I mean. That is the standard. So if if you are in a relationship where you know I might be the bouncer at the strip club that you work at, and you know what I mean I don't want you to not strip. You know what I mean this is our this is our situation. This is how we get down. It's another Bonnie and Clyde type situation. You know what I mean I'm comfortable with you giving lap dances. We have a contract. We have an understanding and a commitment. That's cool. You know what I mean. And there are times where that contract or commitment can be changed. And it can be a situation like, hey, yes, I did meet you in the strip club. You know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? I see something. And, yes, we are getting in a committed situation. And I see something different for our relationship moving forward. It's some women that's in the strip club that want to, you know, be involved in a relationship and want to be out of the strip club, that would prefer to be out of the strip club. And a man shouldn't be able to say, well, damn, I met you there. You need to stay stripping. You need to stay in there stripping. She might be like, listen, I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I met you so I can leave that environment, so I can be, you know what I mean, in a different setting, so I can grow, you know what I mean, in a different way. So I think growth, we can't be afraid of growth. And sometimes people try to act like they're stifling your growth, but sometimes they can be helping you to grow. When, you, when you're dealing with a partner in a relationship, make sure you pick somebody whose advice you cherish. Exactly. That's going to be somebody. That's that's going to be your first line of defense when it comes to making a a, a, a critical decision. Mm -hmm. So if somebody that I'm pulling on my team and we we made a contract and the understanding that we're partners, you know what I mean, and with whatever we're doing, then I need to be able to trust your judgment, trust your decision making at times. I'm not going to call you insecure because but it's guess all what? in the approach, Ma. When you no, agree? completely. Yeah. No, no. So no, that's no. what I was about Listen, to say. I, was I can about take it differently depending on how you approach it. It's all about the having approach. Having a conversation about it's it. It's all about the approach. We but agree listen, on that. Having, having, when the person, if the female has in her mind that she wants to get out of the strip club, that's one thing because y'all want to have a conversation. So you're going to help her and motivate her trying to get out of the strip club. You're not going to be like, now that we together, no. you need to get out because she doesn't share with you. Like, listen, right. my goal is, to move on to something else. I'm here right now, but my goal is to move out. You're not going to put that pressure on her. Like, listen, I need you out tomorrow. We together now. Now it needs to stop. I mean, that's a little extreme. But I mean, no, but, but I don't know. But I know it's saying. extreme, but it's real. Because no, that's what I, I mean what by when you meeting somebody, they meet you and you're looking a certain kind of way. They were so in love. They were infatuated with all of that. And then as soon as they got you where they want you to be, now they like, all right, now that need to stop. This need to stop. This need to stop. That need to stop. You like, but 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 the this is you? the thing. You got to realize sometimes. I mean, like people fall in love with you for for reasons that you don't even know. It's it's people that fall fall in love with you. You put your earrings on. You don't put your. I mean, your, your lashes on. You don't put your hair on. You don't put your. You don't hike your, your boobs up. You don't squeeze the middle in. You know what I mean? And you, you put on your favorite dress. And this guy might just, he might love your conversation. He may love your humor. You know what I mean? So you can't you can't say, oh, you met me in a strip club. You That's where you infatuated from me. No, he might have met somebody in a strip club that he feels like is a, is a spiritual connection on a deeper level. Like, forget all of this. Forget. I, I know we're in a strip club. I'm not going to judge you on this environment because we all, you know what I mean, are, are on our journey. However, the spirit that I'm connecting with, you know what I mean? I see us doing something far, far greater and far beyond. You know what I mean? And sometimes you can have your blessings blocked because you feel like somebody's hating on who you is and they trying to make it better for who you can be. You know what I'm saying? So it's your judgment if you are picking a person that you feel has the right advice, you know what I mean, that you can trust. Now, if you're picking somebody that don't have advice that you can trust, 
That's one thing. Then, hey, maybe they is hating. But if you picking somebody, which you should be, that has advice and has, you know what I mean, common sense, that has instincts, that has it's on breaking up a little bit, you know. You know what I mean? If you got somebody that that that, that you should be fi finding somebody whose intuition, whose whose perspective you trust, because that's what your journey is going to be about. It's going to be about having somebody that can be your your second. It can be your brain trust, your second brain to help you to you know what I mean? Because they say you know two minds is greater than one, you know. So you need somebody with that type of a mindset. That can, you know, combine with your mindset to help you make a better decision. And that person, you shouldn't be saying they're hating if they're saying, yo, I think you, you got, yeah, you know I mean, you, that's a little too, uh, you know, that's a little too provocative right there. You know what I mean? I, I remember. Yeah, I it's missed, always a time. What happened it's to women? A time with it. But look, real it's a quick, time. I'm gonna I'm I'm leave on this. It. You can't just instantly just put it on I, somebody I respect, like that. That's respect. what I mean. But this, this is what I'm and saying. That's what real happens quick. a lot. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave this part. Sometimes women. I mean, sometimes us, uh, us men, especially men that that aimed, that looked up to being a traditional man, that looked up to the the possibility from being a young man to say, you know what, I want to have a wife. I want to be a provider. You know, I want to, you know, uh, raise a family. I want to build a legacy. For us men that are traditional men, we had certain things that. Women that appreciated traditional men used to appreciate. I remember, and it might be toxic or not, I don't care. We black, we got shit with us. But I remember when women used to appreciate when a nigga was a little jealous. Like, what the fuck happened to that? Now, I'm confident because I'm letting you come out the house with nothing on your fucking body. Like, I'm insecure because the person that I love, I don't want everybody having her body exposed to everybody out there. Like, we gotta be real, y'all. Like, stop it. Like, Where's the place for a traditional man that wants to provide and wants to be there and protect and hold you down? So and here's the thing. You, you when it mean? come when it comes to the fashion thing, I can't relate to that because I dress pretty modest. So that's never been an issue that I've had. But I feel like there's many layers to this conversation because mm -hmm. it really depends on the relationship. You can be in a thriving yeah. relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And you know in relationships, sometimes things happen. The man finances can deplete and the woman's finances may increase mm -hmm. and because of he or she's insecurities their insecurities may um may drive their opinions mm -hmm. it may look like care or concern but it might be jealousy too you know what i mean and control and, and control because you have some people like if they don't have control over you they don't feel like the loyalty and the love is there like if she not listening to me like, I don't have her. Not realizing, like, a real man, mm -hmm. and I say this over and over and over, a real woman who is submissive and wants to submit, if a man is leading the right way, she's going to submit, she's going to follow willingly. It's She respects this man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I, listen, I, I respect that. And you know what I mean? So when I, what I'm saying, too, is like, you know, this is where, and it depends on the dynamic of the relationship, because even if we're talking about, you know, uh, um, a marriage, it's interesting that, you know, I, I see, you know, we, we have a lot of things that we got to deal with as just like as people, because, you know, I always go back to the, the analogy, like, you know, I see other relationships and the man ain't got no money. Like I, I, I've seen, you know, um, other cultures, Mexican, the nigga on the road, you know what I mean? His wife, you know what I mean? She's pregnant and they have a, a child. And you know what I mean? He might be asking for donations or they might be selling like little tacos or something like that. Not, I'm not trying to be insistent or whatever. But I'm just saying, you know, and guess what? She loves this man. And guess what? She's submissive. And to my the response man. would be, well, go find that bitch with the taco stand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. You looking like oh, you a fucking it. taco bitch. Look, you drop, you drop the mic. You drop. Listen, but that's all I'm saying. That same man, she still is riding behind his advice. She's still submissive. She still understands whatever their dynamic is, and that's their dynamic. But they they still look at it as a partnership. He doesn't have to be, you know what I mean? He ain't got to be the big boss because he ain't at that time. You know, sometimes they're they're in houses. You know, because they thought about this for, for a long 
term. I remember when a lot of the construction workers would, would, would wait at Home Depot, and a lot of them might not have had their per, uh, papers and whatnot. You can you can go to Home Depot, and you can see them hanging out there, and if you need work done, you can get them to do the work for the low, right? So they live all together in, in one house. It might have been 13 of them in a four-bedroom house or whatever the case may be. They save. And I'm talking about the men and the women, their families. You know what I mean? They save. They look for the long haul, right? And now you go around them saying Home Depot, so you don't see them no more. Now you see them in trucks, but they got their names on the side of them. You know what I mean? Now they have the construction site. site. Now they're not taking shorts. They're not doing shit for the low because they had they had a partner that we, you know what I mean, that, that rolled with them through the bullshit times, that rolled with them, you know what I mean, as they were getting their plan together, that went through all of the bullshit when they was bringing home a little bit of money, that was willing to sacrifice, you know, and say, you know what, I know, listen, I ain't trying to be in here with two other families or three other families. Like, come on, you need to get us an apartment. No, they rolled it out. So it's like sometimes it may not seem like your man has the right plan, but some, you know what I mean? But why is it that we have to be so ultimate to get the basic necessity of respect that should be inside a partnership? Now, uh, can I say something uh, really, really quick? Because you brought up heard. Mexicans, right? <laughs> you brought up Mexicans. Asians, too. But go ahead. Okay, any other culture. So I'm right sure. now, everybody in this room is black, right? And we talk For about sure. black love and, you know, how we can grow and be better and thrive, right? But we have to really, that's why I said there's so many layers to this conversation because we have to consider the systemic stuff that affects us, right? Effect. Effect. Right? And then that stuff happens and it, it's like a domino effect of how we behave in our relationships too. She said really so quick. Black, black love is, is different. No, it is. No. That's, that's a fact. We always want to, we always want to ask these questions, Ma, and that was a good question to ask. But the fact that, I mean, maybe I could be wrong. I haven't done enough research, and y'all could tell me if I'm wrong. But what other, systemically, what other race they wiped out fathers on purpose? The Mexican people still got their dads. I wiped. said black. Did you miss what I just said? I'm not arguing. I'm not. I'm on your team. I'm not, Systemic. I'm not, no, for sure. He agreed with you. I understand you. what you're saying. I'm not arguing. Yeah. With you. Yeah, he agreed. <laughs> Do you, Look, do you oh, very right. combative. That's what you talking right. about. No, 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 no. You can't even agree no, no, with the black First of all, first of all Ma, so you're, now you're being a traditional man, taking up for a man because he's a man and he's No, he wasn't, he wasn't going to get but, but we're trying to Sheree, forward Sheree, think. We're not Sheree, trying to, that's you being a modern woman. woman. You call that? You're, you're, you're debating with somebody that's He's been coming at me since I popped on. True, but this time he I wasn't. I didn't say anything. I came in peace. He started talking about gray sweatpants. I even forgot that I even was talking about sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was saying, bro. <laughs> but as Can I was I say saying, something? We, Can I we, say something? I'm sorry, Chad. I don't mean to cut you off, but so I, why you I, asking? I would love to make, while we have all these good people on here, I just would like the big to make a big announcement is that the Davis's and Friends is now officially on Apple Podcast, period. Hey! Okay. Come on now, come through. Come yeah. oh, we are now on Apple, y'all. Y'all can Well, we need to start talking about a split sheet because if I hear my voice, I'm calling Apple. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Chad. I want you to make your point. I, and for the next way. episode, can you have an apple to put in his mouth, please? Wow, see, see. I don't even mess with pork, so I ain't even gonna mess with you. you um, know what? Ooh, ooh, hold on, ooh, sir. But what ooh, I'm saying is, no other right. race. We on Apple Podcast, y'all. Good nope. stuff, y'all. So you're going to let right. me talk? <laughs> Go ahead. You got it. Go ahead. I'm here acting like Cedar, right, looking right. like Cedar from BET. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Yo, remember Cedar? Yo. Uh, so no <laughs> other race <laughs> has gone you through. You're so funny. You know what? No other race has gone through what we what we went through as far as losing the, the, the man in the household and uh, systemically, as, as this young lady was saying. So there are a lot of things that we're trying to get back from. So I think the goal is we have to understand the impact of all the things that we get through, got through so we could get tired of talking about it and change it. Nobody else, like I could think of a Mexican dad, Mr. Guadalupe or whatever his name is. <laughs> Mr. He's, Guadalupe. He's Jose. teaching his daughter. Jose. He, he's teaching his daughter, you know, to get passed on to a man, right? Uh, Asian people are getting their kids ready for a husband. And Indian people are getting their... A, a, a lot of us fathers, black fathers, is like you don't need a nigga for shit. You always got me. So intimate. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, we we kind of 
are part of the problem too. Because I'm going like I, I ain't gonna lie and tell you that I'm gonna tell my daughter grow up to be, and teach her how to be submissive for a man. Because I feel like a lot of these men are on bullshit too. But I'm mm -hmm. part of the problem, so I think that ultimately there is a a, a lot of issues that we have amongst each or each other. Um, not that we created them, but we're uh, continuing the evolution of the Willie Lynch and all of the other things that was made for us, welfare, and Section 8, and AIDS, and drugs. Like, all of this stuff was created for us. We ain't had no boat to go get that stuff. So if we realize that that stuff has put us behind the eight ball and get on the same page, then maybe if women didn't feel like they had to be the dad and the mom, like, women believe that they could teach a boy how to be a man. And that's a problem. It's well, if more fathers were in the home, we would have a better respect and outlook on men in general. Because that, like w what I was saying earlier about experiences in the yeah, I'm environment. I'm talking to y'all. Go ahead. You can go ahead. In my environment, <laughs> I've witnessed and been a victim of not having a father in a home and witnessed a lot of relatives and friends not having a father in a home. So that right there alone already gives you the idea of mistrust yeah that's all i'm saying i'm done yeah it was, I mean, it was taking too long chad i'm sorry yeah i, I mean i mean and, and chad i want to pass this to you i want to pass this to you it uh, what you said also speaks to your own point that the systematic breakdown you know what i mean again all all these fathers that are, are missing his father's been a great father in other households and, you know, for whatever reason, you know, wasn't welcomed in the household of the child, you know, that they created for whatever reason. But instead of getting on that part, because we'll never get to the bottom of it if we point the fingers. So the name. person who put victim question mark. So when I said victim, when you have an absent father in a home, it causes abandonment issues. So that's when you become a victim. Just to clear that up. No, you never call. You, I don't even think that's the right word to use. You're not a victim. You just behind. You just have limitations to what you experience. That, that's that's your that's your opinion. I'm only speaking from a scientific fact. So you think you're a victim? That's that's what you are. When when uh, when oh, your so, father so it's like a victim of circumstance. On, if you're going to ask me a question, let me support what I'm saying. Right. So if I'm saying that I'm a victim, it's because if you don't have a father in the home or you don't have a mother in the home, if you have an absent parent, it causes trauma. So that's, that's not true. You, <laughs> you can't prove that it causes trauma. You can't uh, prove listen, it. the next episode, I will have some research to back up what I'm saying. I don't speak on anything I haven't studied. So, so let me ask and you. I'm not just talking about one article. I'm talking about peer-reviewed scholarly articles. So, you, so okay. let, me, let, me get, let me get this straight from my own, represent, my own mental telepathy or whatever. Uh -huh. You're saying if you don't have a mother or a father, either or, or both, it automatically, mm -hmm. automatically creates trauma. Absolutely. You're more susceptible to trauma. That's what you're saying that. something totally different. You No, I'm, I'm still, listen, I'm still on the same page. See, you want to win. And no, it's, it's not, not about that. winning here. We're talking about facts. No, that's not about facts. It's not about, it's not about winning. I'm being serious. This is a serious topic. It's not about winning and looking like who's smarter. You know what I mean? And I know you're trying for that. It's, it's, it's no, 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 this is actually where you're wrong. You're actually assuming. I, no, it's not, not an assumption, but someone had a question mark, so that meant that they was unsure or confused about something. And I explained my point. Because you don't understand my point does not mean that I'm wrong. So just because we don't agree, you think I don't understand? No. That's what you you, you don't understand. Because if you understood, you would not be going back and forth with me with my response. Do you feel slighted about growing up in a But I'm just saying that what you're household. saying can't be proven. Uh, we have a question. Did, we have a didn't question I just say uh, the next episode I will have research to back up what I am saying? <laughs> yeah, but what, you're what, not going to find that research. You're telling me that if you don't have a mom or possibly a dad, you have trauma. That's not true. You could be susceptible You are more to susceptible to trauma. Yes. Okay, so that's something totally different. 
Well, let, let me say this. Let me say, hold up, hold up. The natural order up. of things is mom and dad. The natural order of things. I don't care how successful a person, childhood may be, or whatever the case may be, when you are missing the other parent in the home, the child does suffer some delays in their development. And that's facts. That's scientific facts. It's nothing that I'm making up. Yeah, I, I also want to add that um, also, and it's not to take anything away from that, because I think it's very important for us not to take away the value of any parent not being in a household. You know what I mean? I think that's one of the things that has been taken lightly, you know, for so long to the point where we have a culture of this, you know what I mean, single parent culture. You know what I mean? Whereas though, you know, it's no fight to keep the um, the father involved in the children's life. You know what I mean? In, in fact, in some cases, you know what I mean? It's a learned behavior of pushing a father out the door. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's actually encouraged. It's, it's, it's rewarded. You get rewarded with, you know what I mean, um, uh, different benefits when a father is not in the household. So I, I forget all of the facts, you know what I mean, or whatever the case may be. I am a proponent of acknowledging how significant the role of both parents are in the house in the household now even if it's not in the household both roles that parents play even if it's you know what i mean what they call that when both parents not together but they still co -parenting. Co -parenting. even in the aspect of co-parenting to have a child that's receiving love from both parents that's a that's a dynamic that you know we have taken so lightly and so most of our children are starting out you know what I mean? Without that balance. So the mm -hmm. balance is what can definitely create, you know what I mean, an issue for these children. And I'll give an example. And, and again, th this is all us going off of, you know, our experiences, you know what I mean, our perspectives, right? So I'm not trying to claim that I'm completely right about um, certain things. But I am passionate about certain things, um, although I may not be, you know what I mean, perfect about it, or it may be right or wrong, whatever. But I have a passion with certain things. But that's something else. My, a friend of mine, he, he does work inside the juvenile system and um, helps to teach some of the uh, young men that are juveniles how to cut hair. And it's funny because a lot of the young men... <clears throat> actually use the ter like they use the, the, the whole um uh dynamic that I'm a single I'm, I'm I came in a single parent household, you know what I mean? And I didn't have a father around and I don't know how to control my emotions, you know what I mean? And they're not balanced and I have a lot of ways of you know what I mean of a female. And you know what I'm saying like <clears throat> apparently like that's something that's been used that has gotten some of those brothers off to a certain degree, probably depending upon the lawyer he had, and that was a part of whatever the, the dialogue was to fight for this young man to get either a lesser sentence. But the whole point is, it's a, it's a truth in that. It's a truth in the fact that some of these young men are growing up without the balance of understanding their masculinity. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and it does impact them. So some of them that are acting wild, for some of them that do act sporadically and don't use, you know what I mean, a certain amount of emotional intelligence, you know, that are reckless, that, that feel like they don't have anything to live for, to feel like nobody cares about them. I don't have a man that cares about me, you know what I mean? Um, I, and, and this is the person that made me, you know. So some of these resentments, some of these, this imbalance, uh, it, it's absolutely impacting our youth in our community. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that part about it, I don't care about none of them stats or none of that. That part about it, you know what I mean? It needs to be upheld that both parents need to be equal. But that's, know, the, point that, equal that's the point that I was trying to make. When you have that absence, the child mm -hmm. suffers in their development, their thinking, their self-esteem, mm -hmm. how they look at themselves. All of that stuff plays a role when there's a parent absent in a home, whether it be the mother or the father. That was the point that I was trying to make. I agree with that. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, you know what I mean? And I think yeah. we can overcome. I think we can overcome all things, but having that imbalance does make an impact, and that's that's from my perspective also. Sheree, you call me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, cause I was being a student right now. Cause Maul has this thing. Yes, about he him. did. He supported my statement because he's a smart man. Well, see, see, what you what you're doing is you're not understanding what this guy was saying, and this is why me and Maul we don't agree all of the time. Cause instead of saying what it is, 
Maul will try to conjure up both sides and put it into an alternate perspective. What made you believe he was on your side, but actually... What but, it, but here's the thing with me, Chad. I don't need people to be on my side when I'm speaking facts. No, but because I just, facts but, is something that you can research and you can have proof. That's validity, right? But but but, but, hold, but you talked about earlier about something that has to do with validity, so you contradicted yourself right there. But what I'm saying to you is, what he said was, if you just give me a second to talk real fast, what he said was, I don't care about facts. <laughs> so what he was doing was taking your side and my side and coming to a point that me and you both can agree on to kind of bury the hatchet. But what I'm saying is, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But the only thing that I disagree with you was. You said if a parent, and maybe you made a mistake or misspoke, I don't know. But what I'm saying to you is what you said was if a kid is missing a dad or a mom or both, he's automatically going to have trauma. And I disagree. But when you said he's more susceptible to trauma, then I can say I can see that. But you don't automatically have trauma because your mom and dad isn't there. That's all I'm saying. That can't be proven. That's all. But ultimately, all the things that we all say, we agree. But that was just that one thing. And I don't want to be a stickler. This, top this topic, your statement. My laptop is right over here, and I and I have access to some journals that cannot be accessed unless you are a scholar, and I will have access <laughs> to it, and I will inbox oh, you this information. <laughs> okay. So, do you think since I graduated college, I could, I'm still susceptible to get those same information? You or no? No, no, no. I didn't say I didn't say that. What I'm uh -huh. saying is, I have access to it to an <laughs> engine. That can help me find, choo, choo. you know, support in what we're talking about is all I'm saying. Okay. Then see, the thing is, the difference between you and I, see, you like to compete to try to make yourself look smart. Ooh. And I just talk the facts, and that makes me look smart. Because I don't talk about anything I haven't studied, I haven't read, I haven't thoroughly digested. I don't even say it out my mouth. Mm. Mm. But I'm also in a place, because I enjoy being a student, is why I can be a good teacher. I'm willing to listen and internalize things. Well, Ma, is it possible? And is critically it... think before I say <laughs> So, April, you said, look, come so, on. Ma, before, before we you invest that, Chad. We invest. Where's no before, guns before, 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 you, before, you, before yeah. you get on your political <laughs> thing, Ma, what I want you to do is. Here we go. I want you to say sometimes. And Chad, for the record, you are be. very bright. So one thing you said earlier that I remember, you said you don't got to tell people that, you know, it is what it is. You I'm, know, just, I'm just purpose. saying, see, that's a learning curve for you. <laughs> wink, 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 Chad. You don't have to tell everybody. When when you have that ability, it will show. Right. So I, I, I don't think I needed you to tell me how smart, how bright I am. With, I mean, he gave us the announcement, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, because I'm smart. I'm smart. Nobody asked you, Chad. <laughs> Nobody you the asked people, you. What's your, you, you see, it's them people. glasses. It's them glasses that think you that got you. <laughs> Take them glasses off and get back to reality, man. <laughs> <laughs> Have mercy. Okay. So we'll we'll we, Chad, about the we'll final steps. Put them glasses back on, player. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta switch the glasses just in case she thinks she says something. No, it's just, it's just something about me that triggers him for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. <laughs> no, this is the thing, I don't know. This is the thing with me. Like to be honest, like my personality, even if you want to talk life paths and all of that thing, I am a very great conversationalist. But I also am a debater, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I work on these things. Like even if I don't agree with something, I'll take the other side to create an argument. I was supposed to be a lawyer, but I actually let my man sign me up for college and he put me to be down for Well, I'm uh, glad you didn't because this case you would have lost. So so <laughs> okay, all right. So let me tell you one thing I learned. Everything don't need a reaction. But I'm gonna tell you what my grandma said. <laughs> Just because you're quiet doesn't mean that you agree or you're stumped. Sometimes you reach a point where you of no return where it's like it doesn't become worth it to keep going on. We got the video. It will be on Davis and Friends. It's on Apple Podcasts. I will rewind it, save it, rewind it back for you. You know when people start losing, when they start bringing up stuff that grandmama said. Like, now you're just <laughs> reaching. Now you're just reaching. Now, now you know what yeah. my grandmother used it's to say. It's looking bad, bro. Now you're just bro. looking for empathy at this point. Okay, bro. Chad. All right. Bro. You won. You won. You got it. Red fish, blue fish. Right. I'm so telling listen. you, 
Nick-nack so, patty whack. Nick-nack patty. So listen, <laughs> first of all, let's, 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 let's do this. I would like to, um, as we come into a close, I would like to have us um, just give a closing, you know, I'm not perspective. Praying. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let us bow our heads. So what are we doing? Because I don't want to say grace by accident. No, no. All we're doing <laughs> is... All we're doing is just giving, you know what I mean, a closing statement on our, our topic or a closing sta statement on any aspect of the conversation. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'll start off. You know what I mean? Uh, so what I'll say in terms of, um, I'll go back to the definition of unconditional love. <clears throat> Based okay. on uh, our conversation, it, it seems to me that unconditional love may not really exist. Um, I think there can be people that have um, been guilty of loving maybe too hard. Maybe unconditional love is like loyalty, and you can get to a point of, um, you know, it can loyalty can be a form of stupidity also. So you have to have some type of a line. So mm -hmm. when it comes to, to unconditional love, I think I'm fine with having love under conditions. I like having rules and parameters. I like people respecting my rules and parameters. And I don't think I deserve anybody's <laughs> love if I'm not <laughs> upholding a certain standard. So for me, I'll say in terms of unconditional love, you know what I mean? Outside of maybe for, again, for children, you know what I mean? Um, I don't think that should be something we should be concerned about. I think we should be concerned about having, you know, uh, communication, having commitments that we that we stay, you know, true to, or that we, you know, do the best to uphold. So for me, I think we should have conditional love and not seek for unconditional love. I think we should have standards for how we are in relationships. I would like to go next. It's going to be very brief and short. I do believe in unconditional love. But in the terms of relationships, when things start to not make sense and you start to question some things and you start to look stupid, you got to change those conditions. Copy that. Chance. I'm sorry. I'm putting my bid in for Jamal to be the next <laughs> something of um, Here we go. a congressional seat. Because one thing yeah. Jamal is going to do... And I and I have proof, right? It's not about him being in the big bushes over there hiding. It's about <laughs> not this again. I have phone records after each of these lies. <laughs> and he called me and said, "Bro, I don't understand how they said that." So I said, "Ma, but why you be leaving me out here to dry?" He said, "Earl, because like I gotta live with my wife, and I don't want her." To <laughs> so I just be trying to keep everything even seesaw. But a seesaw is not meant to be even. It's meant to pick a side. You either going to run for office, you either going to be a Democrat or a Republican. You got to, you can't independent. be independent. But even if you pick independent, that's a side. That's something you rarely do is pick a side. So therefore, if you're not picking a side, you're on the opposite side. So Ooh. unfortunately, um, when we're talking about unconditional love, I think that is your responsibility to not tell somebody or show somebody how to take advantage of you or how to love you. There has to be parameters and understanding amongst each other where you're not giving somebody all of the answers to the test. They have to show you that they're capable to take the test and pass the test with flying colors without your heart or without your help. You cannot tell somebody, you can do anything to me. I'm the pinata because I love you. I love you with all parts of my body. You make my heart say, okay. People are conditioned. People are conditioned to be great people, but when the opportunity of of, of to be bad is up, people will take advantage of that. And I can't give that to somebody. You can't leave that out there for support. You cannot leave your car running all night with the doors open and the, and the door and the windows unlocked. You have to stand for something. Lock your doors, lock your windows, and make sure that it's locked. Uh, well said. I mean. Not the best reception, but well good said. job. Oh, oh y'all couldn't hear me. The reception was bad. All right, well, let me say what I said. Well, what I said no, was, no, 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 we, no, no, we oh, got, we got, we, oh, we heard it. Got. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong? All right, Miss well. Davis. 
I mean, I just say go with the flow. That's what I say. I do. I do believe in unconditional love. Um, I know it's rules and regulations to all this situation, but I do believe in it, and um, I do believe there's levels to it. Um, no, it's not all the same. No, it doesn't stay the same. Everything changes. No matter if anybody believes that it doesn't change. But um, I do appreciate everybody coming on tonight. As again, as I said, we are now on Apple Podcasts. So you can mm -hmm. download this episode on Apple Podcasts. And it will be, video will be on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, that's the Davises and Friends. The link is in my bio. So if you want to watch a visual, you can watch that on YouTube. But if you want to be in your car... And you just want to listen to what we talk about on these last 27 episodes that we had as of today. Uh -oh. You can download us on Apple Podcasts. Out of and these 27 we... episodes, I've been on 23. So, do they pay us every three months or what? <laughs> <laughs> April been on six, so I think we all need some money. <laughs> That's a good plan. Well... Now, now, yeah. now that a star has arrived. <laughs> where did it? Where is that? You see it shining. That's why you always trying to dim my light. Oh, you was referring to you. Oh, but yeah. a real I was referring to me. Like how you was referring to you being smart. I'm a star. Well, the stars <laughs> in the sky don't say I'm a star. They just bright. And your light bulb is actually great. <laughs> Jamal, <laughs> the way you laughing, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. He ain't gonna pick a side. Like Woo, John Street ain't gonna pick a side. <laughs> Listen, I totally appreciate y'all coming on here. Um, you know, I'm always open to new topics. Again, I will be posting a poll, you know, to hear what everybody got to say. If you're interested, please, 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 please put your questions in the polls. This is serious. These conversations are serious. This is everyday life that mm -hmm. somebody, anybody, and everybody is dealing with on a regular basis. And um, this is definitely a village. This is just not a one-man show. <laughs> okay. So please, if you're open to join, <laughs> middle school principal, that is crazy, y'all. Um, if you have something to say, please feel free to come on and join. You know, this is just not one man, a one man band. This is a village, and I definitely appreciate y'all. And I'll see y'all next Wednesday, eight p.m. sharp. Yes, read y'all books because they be ready, y'all. <laughs> Good night, y'all. <laughs> I'm crying. Chat is dumb. <laughs>